Welcome back, Pet Parent. If you are new here, my name is Jessica, and this is the Pet Parenting Reset. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer, and today we're talking about four things that you might be doing wrong walking your dog. If you've been around on this channel for a while, then you may already know this first one, but if you're brand new here, you may not have heard this before, so here it goes. I never, ever, ever recommend attaching a leash to a collar. I always want you to be attaching leashes to harnesses. So if you are walking your dog with a leash attached to a collar, that is the first mistake on our list today that you may be making and here is why. So a dog's neck is very sensitive. Think about everything that's in their neck. You've got their trachea, their esophagus, their spine, you've got veins and arteries, all of these things that can very easily be damaged and quite often do become damaged. Whether you have a small dog or a big dog or anything in between, it is so incredibly easy to damage your dog's neck, anything inside of your dog's neck. It's very common in small breed dogs that collapsed trachea can happen. Now there are many different reasons and usually it's a bunch of things all put together, but pull, especially, especially when you have strong pullers, but even if your dog doesn't pull on the leash, things still can happen. If your dog ever tries to lunge at anything, a squirrel, a person, a dog, anything, damage can be done to their neck. That is the first and foremost reason why I only recommend attaching leashes to harnesses. Also, especially if you do have a strong puller, attaching a leash to a harness, a, a harness that fits really, really well, that's important too. You are going to have much more control. So if you're small in stature like I am and you are walking a big dog or a dog with a lot of power, you're going to want to have that extra bit of support when walking your dog. Even if your dog normally walks beautifully on leash, things can happen from time to time and you want to be prepared. So two reasons right there why you should only be walking your dog attaching a leash to a harness and never a collar. All right, the second one, I see people doing it all the time. Oh my goodness, it drives me nuts. Walking your dog while being on your cell phone, while you're, whether it's talking on the cell phone or scrolling through social media, answering emails, whatever it may be, when you're walking your dog, this is not a time for you to get caught up on things. This is a time for you to be bonding with your dog. Plus, you need to be paying attention to everything going on around you and your dog. It's your responsibility to make sure you know what's going on and what is in your surroundings, especially if you need to be paying attention to things that your dog may be reactive to. Or, heaven forbid, there's another dog off leash running towards you and your dog and you have no idea because you've got headphones in and you're scrolling on your cell phone. That could be disastrous, right? This is a bonding experience for you and your dog. Walking for dogs is something that they only do in groups when they are with their family members, when they are with their other pack members. So the fact that you and your dog are walking together is one, your dog is putting a lot of trust into you and you need to step up to, to be worth putting that trust in, right? And bond, bond with your dog. This is a really great time also to be training with your dog. That's not part of the list. That's not a tip on this list, but it could easily be added. So make sure you are paying attention. You are in the moment you are walking alongside your dog and not just scrolling on your cell phone. All right, number three on the list is taking the same route over and over and over and over again and or making your walks too short. So a lot of people think that walking your dog is only for letting your dog get out, getting outdoors and using the potty. Like these are just for potty breaks. That is actually anything but the truth. And in our fourth tip, I'm going to expand on that a little bit more. But making your walks too short, one is not getting your dog the exercise they need. And then, I mean, if you're using this, if you're taking the same route over and over and over and over again, especially if you're doing it day after day, multiple times a day, this is gonna get really, really boring for your dog, for you as well. But if you think about it, you have a whole life outside of your home and your dog 
doesn't. These walks are time for them to experience the world outside the four walls you live in. So make sure you are varying your routes, that you are not making them too short. Now, I understand that sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too cold, sometimes the weather is just not great, right? That's, that's why, check out last week's video <laughs> where I went over Gosh, I wanna say it was at least 15 tips for exercising your dogs indoors. I will link that in the description below. But in general, most days you can vary your route. You can take a longer walk. Make sure you are putting in the time, putting in the effort to make these walks fun for your dog and for yourself. All right, I saved the best tip for on number four. I saved the best one for last because I wanted to go into a little bit more detail with this one let your dogs sniff. If you are not letting your dogs sniff when you're going outside on a walk, oh my goodness. There's actually research that shows that one, smelling the environment is the best way that dogs interact with their environment. So if we are not allowing them to do this, if we're constantly pulling on the leash, telling them to come on, come on, you don't want them st stopping and sniffing, you are, well, you're depriving them of, of a sensory experience and possibly one of the most important sensory experiences to our dogs. But also there are scientists and researchers who have studied this and say that it's a form of sensory deprivation. It's really damaging to our dogs when we don't allow them to engage in the world in the way that they do, they need to do it best. One really interesting fact is that our noses have about 6 million olfactory receptors. So we can smell a lot of stuff and that number sounds really high. But our canine companions, on the other hand, have about 300 million olfactory receptors. So your dog is smelling things that you can't, literally you can't even imagine. So us as humans, we can detect smells and odors in parts per billion, but our dogs actually smell in parts per trillion. So if we think about, if we add a teaspoon of sugar to a cup of coffee, we can smell the sweetness in that cup of coffee. Your dog, however, you could literally add a teaspoon of sugar to an Olympic sized swimming pool and they could still smell the sweetness. Additionally, the part of our brain that is devoted to breaking down and understanding the input from our olfactory receptors is relatively small when we think about how large, first of all, our brain is much bigger than a dog's brain, right? But the part of our brain that analyzes what we smell is relatively small. When we think about our dog's brain, the part of their brain that analyzes what they smell is 40 times larger than the part in our brain that does the same thing. So making sure when you are out on a walk that you do let your dog sniff. We like to call these sniffaris. So yes, it is true that not every single walk can be a sniffari. However, I like to at least, when I'm training with my clients, at least half of the walks that you take should be snafaris for your dog. One tip, pro tip here, is when you are differentiating a snafari from a, come on, we gotta get this done, walk, or a training walk, I, that's how I like to differentiate walks with dogs, either a snafari or a training walk, use a different leash or harness to let your dog know what kind of walk you're gonna be taking. It doesn't take too many walks, using these different harnesses for your dog to pick up on, okay, this harness is a, come on, let's get it done, and this harness is great. I get to go out and smell the world. So the fourth and final, while everything on this list is really important, the fourth and final tip is possibly one that I really, really like, first of all, I really wanna hit home for you, but maybe you've never even heard of or thought of before, and that's why it is so, incredibly important. Let your dog have these snafaris. Let them interact with the world the best way they are built to do so. Denying them this is in fact, in some research papers and some scientists who have studied this with dogs, is actually pretty cruel denying them this engagement with the world, especially when they are confined to the four walls of our home. 
day in and day out. So for me, these are the top four things I see people doing and making these mistakes while walking their dogs. I, first of all, hope you are not making these mistakes. And if you are, wonderful. I'm so glad you watched this video so that you and your dog can have better walks. So I do hope that this video was helpful for you. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you are not subscribed, look down there at that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click it and make sure you click the bell, click all notifications. That way YouTube or Rumble can notify you every time I upload a new video or go live. I also hope that you join the family over on Patreon. You get new content, exclusive content, behind the scenes content, and first look at content as well as exclusive discount codes for the merch store. So this is possibly my favorite piece in the merch store. It is progress over perfection. And of course it's available in hoodies like I have on, t-shirts, tank tops, all the things. Make sure to get yours today, but join Patreon first to get your exclusive discount code. Thank you so much for being here. I do hope you share this content with other dog lovers in your life. Until next time, bye guys.